wrestling fans. Michael Elgin, who will whoop your big ass. Fuck Michael Elgin. Now Mike Elgin, let me tell you something, boy. You big juiced up jelly bean looking mother. Michael Elgin. The bullshit continues. Listen up, wrestling fans. That's right. Listen up. The bullshit is continuing. And fuck Michael Elgin oh, some yeah. more. Fuck him. Uh, yeah. that notion. Here's, here's the thing. Uh, I didn't. I really didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of time after no. the initial Michael Elgin incident happened talking more Michael Elgin. I don't like focusing on negativity. I like to generally, uh, since these are fan podcasts, uh, I like to keep them positive and talk about stuff that we like. That's why we do these podcasts mm-hmm. for for fun. We're here to talk about fun things. But he popped up in the news again. We're going to we'll, we'll definitely talk about it. Uh Taco and I were almost at the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we'll get into that. Hello, welcome to Strong Honor. My name is Tommy Stryker. Taco is here. What up? Joe is here. What's up? And yeah, we got some stuff to talk about. Uh, not a ton. We're going to keep it pretty short this week, so we'll talk about uh, the stuff that happened over last weekend at the AAW show, so on and so forth. With the highlight, the, the headline should have been fucking Tetsuya Naito uh, taking a, a tour of, of the United States. Instead, everybody's talking about the big juiced up jelly bean looking <laughs> motherfucker. Let me tell you something, boy. You big juiced up jelly bean looking mother. Uh, so. I probably would have taken the sh- you know the ban and threw my soda at him. <laughs> would have been worth it, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll get into that. We'll talk uh, this week's Ring of Honor TV. Uh, we did the uh, the the uh, the card for the New Japan uh, anniversary show coming up on the what is it the. Uh, Six, uh, the sixth, wait, of Mo- ninth, S- ninth of the, the sixth is. Uh, wait, we're talking about Ring of Honor, J- the, the New Japan anniversary show. Well, I have an anniversary it's show March the same sixth. month. <laughs> is uh, March sixth. Uh, we. Uh, the card came out for like as we were recording last week's show, uh, so we didn't talk about it on last week's show. So we'll talk about the the card mm-hmm. for the anniversary show, as well as uh, we'll do a, a quick preview for the uh, Honor Rising shows coming up yes. this weekend in uh, New Japan, featuring of course New Girl. Japan and Ring of Honor talent, because this is indeed a Ring of Honor and New Japan podcast. So let's start with the ugly shit right away. Uh, again, fucking right for his jelly bean head. <laughs> Dunk. So. Yeah. Coca-Cola over Ma- stickiness. <laughs> Michael Elgin showed up at some indie shows this weekend, uh, but most notably at the AAW show in Chicago, where uh, the headlining match was uh, Tetsuya Naito taking on Sammy Callahan. Uh, now, uh, the, the uh, AAW did not announce the entire card for the show. They did uh, what uh, PWG does uh, once a year, do a mystery vortex uh, type of thing where they don't announce a card other than the, that one main event uh, and everything else is a surprise and uh, much to the, su- the surprise of many many AAW fans uh, uh, the unpleasant surprise of Michael Elgin being on the show now I wanted to give AAW kind of the benefit of the doubt thinking well uh, Michael Elgin was behind bringing bringing Naito to this tour of the United States mm. uh, it was indeed Michael Elgin who wrestled Naito for uh, I think it was Pro Wrestling Revolver, which I think is Sammy Callahan's promotion. Uh, so it was Michael Elgin that wrestled Naito on that uh, promotion. Mm-hmm. But I, I believe uh, Elgin was uh, advertised for that show, uh, I think. Uh, so they didn't get as much heat uh, a- advertising him, whereas the AAW just surprising the, uh, the audience uh, on this uh, Naito show. Uh, with uh, Elgin Wrestling. Uh, Now, like I said, I kind of wanted to give AAW the benefit of the doubt, thinking, well, maybe Michael Elgin, asshole that he is, said, uh, if you want Naito on the show, I have to be wrestling as well, uh, because Elgin's trying to get as much bookings as he can. Mm -hmm. Uh, He just re-signed with New Japan. A lot of people want to give New Japan a hard time, uh, but I think with the, the language barrier and them maybe not quite understanding everything that's going on, although Michael Elgin has definitely had some backstage heat because of what's not only go- gone on with the uh, 
the Moses Malone situation, all, all the stuff that came out uh, with him in the relationship with the the woman and uh, the 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 him covering up the uh, alleged rape allegations and all mm-hmm. of that, and him just being a general dirtbag uh, mm-hmm. to the woman and uh, and like his tag partner just talking shit about Jeff Cobb uh, during the World Tag League. Uh, what was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> he just signed the the two year contract right. with New Japan. Just signed the two year contract with New Japan. Uh, but yeah, New Japan hasn't been really using him uh, in main events and stuff like that. Certainly, they haven't been giving him any kind of push recently. Uh, so I, th- I, th- I think they're treading on uh, light water with Michael Elgin too. I think it's too like, you know, it, take this as you will. It's kind of like that Japanese culture too. They're very you know your personal business is your shit, you know, you're here for work business kind of, you know, track mine. They're very professional in that manner. That's just, that is their culture. But they also take, like, cheating very they seriously. Do. I, th- I think if this was, like, an Enzo level, we wouldn't be seeing so- shit like this at all. I mean, it's, you can't, it's hard to say put level, you know, yeah. say levels, but it's just, it's still, you know, like, out there, but it isn't out there. Like, it should be bigger than it is, and it, he shouldn't be able to pop up at these events that he is and kind of pulling the cards he is, so there's odd shit going on. I need to go back to my uh, AAW point, my original point, uh, that I wanted to give AAW the benefit of the doubt, thinking that Michael Elgin might have held them up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was not the case. The uh, I forget the name of him, but I followed him on Twitter. Uh, but the the AAW decision maker, it was his decision. He said, I put Elgin on the show. This is the last time. I'm never going to do it again. Mm-hmm. He caught all kinds of blowback. Uh, of course, tons of upset fans. People turned their back on the match yep. when he came out. Uh, just, yeah, a firestorm on Twitter uh, when the whole thing happened. Uh, so, yeah, really ugly stuff. Uh, go ahead. Hey, it, you know, it doesn't hurt to, you know, that's, you know, perfect example, though, you know, let your voices be heard. You know, uh, I'm glad they are taking action saying, okay, we're not going to let them, you know, be on the show anymore. Well, you got to let New Japan know you don't want this fucker to be on the TV there, no matter if, what country he's in. You know, it's, they need to know. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough spot. Yeah, with New Japan just re signing him as a New Japan fan, how do you feel? Is it, I, I don't, I don't see a lot of people uh, responding online with the, well, I'm going to give up New Japan and New Japan World because they have this guy mm-hmm. on their roster or whatever because they re signed this guy. It's more blowback on, on, on United States Indies that bring him in, which is interesting. It'll be really interesting to see if they book Michael Elgin on the uh, uh, Strong Style Evolved show in uh, in Long Beach coming up next month. Because mm-hmm. uh, if Ooh. he if, if he is on that show, he's there's going to be loud blowback from the American fans. So it'll be really interesting to see uh, what the response fr- from the crowd is there if they book him, and what New Japan's response is. To uh, a, a negative reaction to a Michael Elgin, yeah. and it'd be interesting to hear, even if uh, New Japan kind of hears about what's happening. I mean, because obviously Naito, no, one of like New Japan's top three stars right now, at that show in Chicago, uh, mm-hmm. experiencing that kind of response to a guy like Elgin who brought Naito over to do these shows. Right. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what they do with Elgin going that forward. That might be here. the you know that might be the big thing that needs to happen though, make New Japan realize that he's not wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, just you know, firsthand experience. They might need that arena booing him out, you know, on a big show. Right? How mad would you two have been if you were there? Oh my god! Just like, <laughs> oh that, my that, god! That's what I'm saying. I would have thrown my fucking soda. I would have fucking poly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would have been trying to move myself up front Sorry. so I can tell he could hear me, you know? <laughs> Man, like, that... <laughs> I couldn't believe if I was there. I would have been, if I had driven six hours to oh. go to Chicago to, to watch, to, to go see Tetsuya Naito, mm-hmm. and fucking Michael Elgin shows up unannounced in a fucking match? Oh my God, I would have been really fucking pissed. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I am glad that I did not go to this show. For sure. Uh, <laughs> as much as it saddened me uh, to not be able to go see uh, Tetsuya Naito, I am really, really hoping now, because I do have tickets to the Ring of Honor show in uh, Chicago uh, coming up in May, early May. Uh, I am really hoping that Ring of Honor brings in Naito for that show, because mm-hmm. uh, Taco and I, we got third row yeah. seats uh, nice. for that show, so that'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm hoping for Naito there, and I'm hoping for Okada. Okada hasn't been doing, has not 
done a lot of these uh, Ring of Honor tours in the United mm-hmm. States. Uh, so I'm really hoping for a name like that, uh, and of course all the other uh, fun New Japan names as well. Sure. It'd, be cool to, it'd be really cool to see uh, Suzuki again. Uh, we got to see him last fall uh, for Ring of Honor in Chicago. Uh, so yeah, Bill, uh, looking forward to fun stuff like that. I'm excited to see all these fuckers live. <laughs> like- yes, yes. Uh, and uh, one thing I'm not worried about is seeing Michael Elgin. <laughs> I don't. Nope. I know for sure that he will not be on a Ring of Honor show uh, at this point. So uh, that's a good thing. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, where should we go from here? Should we talk Ring of Honor TV this week and kind of slide Honor Club slide into? Uh, uh, all right, let's get into the Honor Club stuff because yeah, it uh, you it's available now to sign available. up for. Uh, I did not sign up yet. I'm, I'm planning on signing up either this week or next week. Uh, of course, we got a couple of weeks here before the uh, uh, the anniversary, 16th anniversary Ring of Honor pay per view coming up on the 9th of March. Uh, it's so weird because it's like the New Japan anniversary show and then the Ring of Honor anniversary show are like a few <laughs> days apart. Yeah. One's on the sixth and one's on the ninth. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we got a couple of weeks before uh, the next Ring of Honor pay per view. Uh, I definitely want to sign up for the 120 uh, a year deal so that I can get all the Mm pay-per-views for free or, or for that price. Uh, up front instead of the nine ninety nine a month where you can only uh, you have to uh, pay uh, half price for the uh, pay per views and you uh, you're then restricted to uh, watching them on the Ring of Honor uh, wh- whatever the website it, the, right the, now <laughs> basically yeah everything's on the website right now they're still working on getting the apps available uh, I know they're working on Roku and Apple TV stuff I know Taco you volunteered on Twitter to be a beta tester hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> hoping to help out as much as I can with this. <laughs> So, uh, Taco, why don't you go ahead, because you signed up for it. Talk I about signed your up experience. day one-ish. On <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I figured I'd just take the plunge day one. And, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of flaws right now. It's um, barely usable, I'd say. <laughs> okay, yeah, interesting. Um, well, I, and I was a, uh, a ringside member uh, with the old system where you could, you know, go back, go back and watch the old HD net shows mm-hmm. and old DVDs and stuff. And, and did you pay uh, for that service though? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they had the free one and then they had the one you would pay yep. for, but that would give you access to all this other older stuff or whatever. And I, I, tr- I remember tried, I tried watching something like a couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe three, four weeks ago, and I couldn't get into mm-hmm. it. Uh, so, uh, so I so, think you'll still be rolled over till your billing periods ended on right, that. So. Right. I'd look into that, <laughs> but well, um, and, it, and that was I. Th- I did like the twenty bucks for three months, okay. Which was uh, obviously they're not doing that anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that's I think uh, I think my subscription is up on that sometime in the next f- couple three weeks anyway. Uh, so either way, I'm signing up for the new one. But yeah, go ahead. R- right off the bat, uh, signing up it was kind of rough. I put in my card info and you know press submit, and I instantly received an error. Uh, I think it's a chip error or something. I was like. Oh, that fucking sucks. Well, you know, learning that lesson before in the past with online purchases, I went and checked my bank account and I was charged. Okay. So double check. Do not resubmit if you are interested in it out there. Because um, you don't want to check get your bank charged. account right away. And of course, I went back to Ring of Honor's website, rohwrestling.com, and I was a member. So it, it, there was no big issue that way. And it should it's it, uh, it's notable as well that the Ring of Honor website is updated. It's different. It mm-hmm. has a different. look. It's a really nice layout from too. Before, uh, so. I, they they need to update the server, so but sure. um, I'll get into that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, you know, I kind of played around a, a little bit to see what I could kind of get into, and didn't really have any luck with the web browser at all uh, using Windows Seven. Um, yeah, really old. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't. I didn't really have any luck pulling up any videos, but I was kind of at work too at the same time, so I was like, I'll oh, kind of monkey with this later, and. I noticed around 6, the the Ring of Honor TV episode was already up and available to watch and kind of skimmed through it. And what day was this, Monday? Monday, yep. Okay. So a uh, day of the release and everything. So I, I don't know if that's going to be, you know, I don't know if, what time it's available on the Fight app. I believe it was later in the night, but. Usually they get it out by Monday night on the okay. Fight app as well. So I imagine it'll this be This was 6 uh, p.m. Central time, too. I can tell you that it gets up to, at 6 p.m. Okay, okay. Okay. And then, um. Yeah, I just kind of skimmed through it. Same thing you'd see on the Fight app, probably a TV and everything. Same commercials and everything. Um, yeah, I tried to watch it later that night, though, and oh, it was rough. I could not watch it on the uh, the Honor Club uh, website at all. It was unwatchable and sometimes... Um, just buffering a lot? or Kind just... of buffering issues and 
this was all on my phone. I had no luck with the website at all. Even when I got home and used uh, Windows 10, even and okay. used those browsers and everything. So that was kind of rough. But oh, you know, first day, I was kind of expecting those issues, sure. and I had better luck on my my uh, my iPhone. So okay. that's kind of where I started watching it. And there was kind of an issue with dual subtitles being on even though i didn't have subtitles on and <laughs> so it's like oh this is really rough and then i kind of figured that out and then i would watch it and then i would see flip gordon doing the same flip three times in a row and then <laughs> i was just like this is so let me let me try the fight app and i went to the fight app and this was the best experience i've had with the fight app <laughs> There was no odd commercials coming in. The picture was crisp and clear. The sound was great. I was like, where the fuck have you been this entire time, Fight App? <laughs> but, well, so it was a little bit better than last week's experience. And uh, uh, today is Wednesday. I kind of p- try to play around with it, too, uh, again, online yesterday. It's still no luck with the the actual I- I- browser on the on the Internet. So that's kind of frustrating. And kind of reading up online, it seems like some people are having that issue and I don't think they really added anything video wise. It still sounds like the same catalog from the 2011 era and on right, with right. the ringside members have yep. and everything. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. Don't overwork system trying to watch, you know, have people watch old CM Punk fucking shoot interviews. <laughs> That's going to fucking break your website right there. So, you know, they definitely got some bugs to test out and everything. And I, I did click around a little bit today. I didn't get to sit down and watch anything. I, um, uh, I, I started playing that the the last uh, where Dalton Castle won the belt, the, the championship. Okay, yeah, cool. I started final watch, battle. Yep, I, I just wanted to skim through that, see what I could watch real quick, and and that was up there, and you were able. It to was watch up it? there. It did get to start playing, but boy, was it rough. It was pixelated, and huh. it was almost unwatchable. And this was on the computer and everything. And, and this was on uh, home Wi Fi. Or- this was. Allegedly at work, um, <laughs> but that's why I was like not trying to uh, fuck around with it too much. Sure. I was like, you know, a buffer or anything, and yeah, nothing. So I just ended up clicking out. I was like, I'll fucking monkey around with this later. But so it sounds like the, so far, Honor Club has left you feeling uh, tired and sluggish. Do you feel <laughs> sluggish or tired throughout the day? Have you ever thought the problem could be your liver? My liver. My liver. <laughs> I'm sorry for uh, uh, for new listeners to this show, and actually probably for any listeners of Strong Honor, you're probably not familiar with that. That liver commercial <laughs> used to come on our local affiliate where we used to watch, all of us used to watch uh, the Ring of Honor mm-hmm. TV show, and we just thought it was such a funny and odd uh, commercial. Uh, we the look always, on his face always is priceless. As- we always associated it with uh, with Ring of Honor. So now anytime we think about a, uh, a trying experience <laughs> with Ring of Honor, uh, whether it be streaming issues or whatever it's like oh are you having you must be having liver problems watching this ring of honor show are you feeling sluggish and tired uh which is it's funny because it's i'm sure uh, throughout the nation uh people probably <laughs> aren't seeing this commercial and associating no. it with ring of honor it's probably just us here I think it was liver aid was the product uh liver right yeah. i liver- think we don't i don't recommend it but yeah the, <laughs> i don't recommend it at all yeah this poor fellow is like eating pizza and giant two liters of cola and this guy's like yeah Do big you f- ba- big bowl of potato chips <laughs> this guy just has this look on his face like you think it's my liver that makes me feel <laughs> awful it's really do you feel sluggish or tired throughout the day have you ever thought the problem could be the your honor, liver the honor my club liver. is the, is the problem it's not his liver it's my the, liver no the honor club, <laughs> honor club. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm not too upset about it, though. Like I said, it's only been three days, you know, as of this recording that it's been out. And um, but they need to get their. Sh- I mean, if they're charging people they money do. for this, I see, they got to get on top. I, of I'm it. being, I'm being very optimistic yeah, about it. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm coming in with the sense that this 120 dollars is more like I kind of look at it like looking at it like a Kickstarter account almost. Sure. Where, you know, <laughs> it, it, it is like, um, yeah, they are a big name, but they've always played it, you know, step by step by step. They've never really tried to overreach their bound. Well, and I think the the I think the real deadline here is going to be that sixteenth anniversary exactly. pay per view because if there are a lot of issues during that, there's going to be a lot of blowback. Mm-hmm. But uh, they, so they've got to get it worked I, out. I'm by not that. expecting the best for this next pay per view, but you know they, they they definitely have to have it polished up by WrestleMania weekend for sure. Absolutely, but absolutely. um, but I yeah. I think even for the even in time for this pay per view oh, yeah, because oh, yeah. as as a, as a purchaser of Ring of Honor mm-hmm. pay per views, uh, it's. You know, I, 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 if I'm if I'm paying the 120 up front, and I'm supposed to get those pay per views, and I have issues with uh, watching those pay per views, there's, there's going to be hell to pay. Yeah, it, it, it's it's going to be. I see. I'm being very optimistic, like I said. But yeah. it's it's it's, it's going to be rough. That 120 dollars, it's definitely aimed at 
people like me and you where, you know, especially you, where you have invested a lot of money in the pay-per-views. Right, and right. I have, you know, I have been a long time Ring of Honor fan and, um, there is, there's a good, you know, chunk of years, I'd say post punk till most recently that I'm like kind of, huh, about. So sure, sure. there's definitely, you know, some feeling I would love to do, um, yeah, so you know, so yeah, uh, like I said, you know, once they get the old golden years, uh, <laughs> roughly saying up, though, um, it's going to crash their system, and they definitely have to get that weeded out. And the layout of it is very just kind of cookie cutter, black background, you right. know. Uh, what page do you want? It's more New Japan layout than anything. Sure. So it's not like kind a kind of frustrating. Not but like can, a WWE network. It's just it's a website they, where you can click on they videos. They do have it where you can choose through the years through pay per view or t- you know, the T V stuff. But sure. I was kinda having some issues too where I was like, Oh wow, okay, this let's see who's on this card and there's no info online for it. So uh, it's like yeah. they, they 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 got that some cleaning help. up to do, but you know, it, just right after I pressed that enter and you know my my card was charged and everything, I just had a big smile on my face because it's like I got all the Ring of Honor TV I can handle for the next year and I don't have to worry about a bill. Like it's <laughs> yep. just it is such a nice feeling with all these fucking streaming services out there. And I I, I preached it too last week, but it's like them doing this this hundred twenty dollar thing also makes me want to use the ten dollars that I might have been using on Ring of Honor on um like a high spot network or one of these yeah. other minor networks where it's like, well, you know, I, I do but you know want to budget it in. If, yeah, I'm gonna have New Japan, I'm gonna have the fucking WWE network. They fucking get my money every month, you know. <laughs> they, I know they're deserving of it. Ring of Honor is con- consistently giving me great product and you know unfortunately I don't give them much of my money at all. And and, and their and their pay per views are good. So. Yeah they are and you know um we, we get, we're fortunate enough me and Joe are to see a couple matches that you know when you when you <laughs> You get them, so you know I'm very lucky. I'm happy that I'm able to be part, you know, to you know be part of this test run in a weird way. And yeah, you know, I, I kind of want to spread the love and get some of these underground companies going, like the Fest Wrestling and all this, because you know, um, fucking Wrestle Circus Wrestle is putting Circus, on a hell of a yeah. show. And you know, if you're an Amazon Prime, subs- you know, uh, Amazon Prime user out there, you get fucking Twitch for free. You can go back and watch the uh, Wrestle Circus, House of Hardcore, Impact, even so. Yeah, there's so many great services out there. It's just finding the right the money for <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah. All right, let's uh let's get into what happened this week's Ring of Honor TV and then we'll do a quick preview for Honor Rising coming up this weekend already the 23rd and 24th. Uh, if you're a WWE fan, you got the Elimination Chamber on Sunday, the 25th. What does that mean? So the big weekend coming up for uh, for wrestling fans uh, of all uh, genres, I guess. Here, <laughs> so this week, uh, Ring of Honor TV. Couple of we had some good matches here. Uh, Flip Gordon versus Jay Lethal to open the show this yeah. week. Uh, this was like nice. the, the third or fourth show from this uh, Nashville Municipal Auditorium or whatever. Really like this venue yeah, dude. for Ring of Honor. It feels more big time, especially coming out of the the shows that were taped at the 2300. Mm-hmm. Arena, which feels smaller, it feels more TV studio like. Uh, this felt more like a bigger arena. So, like I-, I said, watching it on the Fight app this week, it was the best viewing experience I had on the Fight app, mm-hmm. and just. Yeah, the sound quality, like they up their game. They're you know, like they're getting ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, re- the, the recent, uh, I, like I haven't had the same issues that you guys have had with the fight app recently. Uh, but yeah, when I watch it, I Chromecast it to my TV. Great video quality, great audio quality, uh, and and great commercials too. You know the uh, <laughs> my liver. Uh, but uh, uh, usually you get that CPAP commercial, which is not as entertaining. But uh, anyway, uh, I feel like Flip Gordon's on like a uh, young. Boy Quest. What's I can't remember the guy that's going through it right now, but like he just he keeps having matches with huge people and uh, decent matches yeah. too. Like he's an impressive young wrestler. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're definitely they're giving him more upscale matches, getting him over as a star, uh, and that was definitely definitely the case here where they were getting Jay Lethal ready for a big uh, match with Dalton Castle at the 16th anniversary show. That was confirmed on this week's Ring of Honor TV. Uh, but yeah, the uh, Flip Gordon having good competitive matches. Uh, uh, very good one here, but late lethal does get the the win, of course. I thought you were gonna say uh, your uh, the, the CPAPs commercials are like the best marketing for a wrestling crowd ever. <laughs> <laughs> My liver. <laughs> uh, so uh, what was I gonna say here? Marty Skrull uh, is is getting. I love in, what he's doing. <laughs> involved here a little bit too, because he goes up to Jay Lethal and says, "Hey, if you beat Dalton Castle for the championship, I want the first shot." Later, he goes up to Dalton Castle and does the same bit with him. So what's Marty Skrull's role gonna? Well, it here. started with uh, Punishment Martinez, too, you know, going right. into that title match. Like, 
like <laughs> yeah if you beat uh, if you beat Dalton Castle I want the first so uh, bring it he's he's really bringing the uh, the skull duggery here skull duggery uh, it was you the most use a few <laughs> tricks up your sleeve if you know what I mean a bit of the old skull duggery it was the most british like stroll in challenge someone and then stroll out like all gentlemen like two afterwards it's like <laughs> oh, you sly bastards you so but now the question is is does he get actually involved with the match itself at the 16th anniversary show so that'll be something. is he involved with a match already i don't think he's got any match going on at the at the pay-per-views so no, far gotta get him on got, gotta get him on the screen either way he has number one title spot he, he got everyone to agree whether they win or what <laughs> right right he's, he's got his shot <laughs> he's either way. good and uh, uh yeah he's definitely villained his way into getting his title shot one way or another probably come out do some commentary again get some <laughs> yeah. cheeky laughs there you go uh women of honor tournament uh, opening round match carry Q versus the very green Brandy Rhodes. Not a very good match here. Brandy Rhodes gets the roll-up win after the faux ankle injury. I'm not a fan of this uh, this spot where uh, the where especially when a babyface does it too. Uh, the babyface fakes the injury and then the referee uh, jumps in and, and checks on the uh, the quote unquote injured person and stops the opponent from coming in and and doing further damage. Isn't isn't the point of a wrestling match to injure your opponent in in a way that you can pin their shoulders to the mat for a three count mm-hmm. and or submit them due to injury? Uh, why would you stop uh, jump in the middle of a thing is it because of someone's injured? And I get it, the idea of oh, it makes it look real because oh my god, they might really be injured, and here the referee's getting involved. And I just don't like the spot, uh, especially as uh, someone that you're supposed to like a babyface uh, f- faking an injury and getting one over on the heel. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a bit mm-hmm. of of, uh, I outsmarted you to it, uh, but I'm just not a fan of it. I don't know. What did you What did you guys think? Um, yeah, it's a whatever spot. It's kind of something that works because of her ring ability wise. That's true. I, I kind of jumping she gets on the, the, the w- fluke win or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, jumping on the WWE side uh, um, on 205, they kind of did something similar, not to that extent though, where. Um, it was uh, Mustafa Ali was outside with an injury, and the referee was about to go check on him. And then uh, Jack Gallagher was like, "Count him!" And then the ref <laughs> just instantly started counting. So I was like, "Oh, I liked that." You know, kind of little things like that, sure. like you say. Uh, and in Brandy's case, it's um, you know she's kind of like you said, kind of more green in the ring. So you know, it, it is also the referee's job to protect them in there too. Right, right. <laughs> is she really a baby face though? She was presented as a baby face in this it's match. Just Karen- they're so over. <laughs> Right, and Karen Q is like this. You know, she was definitely playing here. I, I, I mean, I enjoyed her on commentary. What was it the week before? Like, I actually kind of enjoyed her on it. You know, with Ian Riccoboni kind of goofing off a little bit. Yeah, but I just, def- I just def- felt like she had an edge to her more. That's the thing is, she's walking that line, and mm. she. Uh, she, and I don't think she's doing it intentionally. I think she's trying to be a babyface because I think every they think people are going to like her because of the association with Cody. She did do the, the little nod to Dusty with the elbow to the head. Yes, that, that was really bad, actually. But it was fun. It was, it was, it was fun. fun. It was fun. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how she gets uh, improves going forward. And she's going to likely face uh, Tennille, uh, mm-hmm. Tennille Dashwood in the next round. Uh, she, she still has to have her opening round match, but she's. <laughs> well, Watch them fucking name. do a WWE thing, make Tennille lose. <laughs> I, that's certainly possible, uh, but I didn't really recognize the uh, the woman's name that Tennille is going to be facing uh, in the first round there anyway. So probably going to be uh, Brandy Rhodes and Tennille in the second round uh, there. Uh, then the uh, main event was the Hung Bucks versus SoCal Uncensored, and this was kind of a bit to get over the idea that Bully Ray is now, he's not the general manager, he's not the uh, authority, he's the, quote, enforcer now. This shit pissed me off so much. <laughs> Go ahead, Taco. <laughs> it took me out of the fucking match. Like, oh, I... I, I Okay, so they fucking lost the championships, you know, and then Bully comes out and does that whole spiel that, I'm the enforcer, let's do the match. So you just did a fucking GM move. Like, come on, (laughs) come on, really? But it, well, but they didn't win uh, clean, of course. It was the skullduggery. you got to use a few tricks up your sleeve, if you know what I mean. A bit of the old skullduggery. Matt, Matt Jackson had uh, Daniels in the sharpshooter. Uh, the, uh, one of the other SoCal Uncensored guys pulls the referee out uh, so he can't see Daniels furiously tapping out. <laughs> see, I... 
I almost wanted, like, I wasn't mad that the match restarted. I just was mad that it ended instantly again. Like, I almost wanted, like, a cliffhanger to next week Ring of Honor episode where it's, like, a continuation almost. Like, sure, sure. Like, it was just, they like... They did instantly go to, like, the Meltzer driver right after they restarted Yeah, it was just, match. like, so, like... <laughs> like super no, kicks like, Meltzer driver. It was a pretty fucking fun match and then just, like, a... Uh, I'm, uh, it's done. And it was a shocking uh, victory. It yeah. Was, it was shocking to see SoCal and Sensor take the titles. I was like, I agree. Fuck I think yeah, that, it's I starting. Think, I think they could have gotten some mileage with, you know, we're going to come back next week and bring you the, the c- conclusion of this match. Well, it's it, it just because it's... Or bring you a, a rematch. It's more Ring of Honor style, though. They want to give you, like, what you want right away. It's one of the reasons why we go to them is they, they do, I mean, they drag some stuff on, but a lot of times they're just like, here you go. And if you think about it, too, they can certainly come back to this at the six. 16th anniversary oh, sure. uh, pay per view. It's, it's certainly a, a possibility with uh, you know the the uh, SoCal uncensored. Uh, they're going to complain about it and, and demand a rematch. I mean, you got to have something for the hung bucks to do at the uh, at the 16th anniversary show. And this was a really good match. On top, I mean, the the first part of the match yeah. was your typical awesome young bucks style match with all the fun spots and everything you would expect. So mm, That's why it was like, I was just so into it and just the sudden, it was like awesome. It was like, these motherfuckers won. They won. This this, this shit happening. The belts are coming off Bullet Club. Like, <laughs> you know, like shit's imploding. What the fuck? And then, yeah, it just, I don't know. I thought it was not one of their strongest executions, but you can't win them all. What do you guys think of Bully Ray as the, quote, not authority figure, but authority figure? <laughs> I mean, it it works. It gives him something to do. Obviously, he's not going to be in the ring anymore. He did his big deal, but he isn't. I think he signed a Ring of Honor for a while still, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, let's use him. Use his name. It, it's fun. I it, think, you I, can turn it into something really interesting if you do it right. And I think he'll do good in the role. I like him saying that he just pointing out that he doesn't want to quote be an authority, be an author, uh, a GM mm-hmm. or whatever, just to differ. Even though it's the, it's the same role basically, <laughs> but just to differentiate with what we've known coming out of WWE for, sure. for so many years. Uh, and the fact that, you know, he's he's got that credibility as an in-ring performer as well, I think. I mean, not that a Kurt Angle or whatever doesn't, or a Daniel Bryan. Uh, so the, the more I, things I point out, the more it's exactly like what WWE <laughs> is doing. Uh, but uh, – I do like that he's got that credibility, and I like the I like the idea of a guy who's going to enforce the rules. And when somebody pulls a fucking referee out, and the mm-hmm. guy's f- furiously tapping out behind the referee's back, that there's not they're not going to stand for this skullduggery, damn it! So I skullduggery. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. You know, he's like, "What happened to Ring of Honor? What's with all this fucking chaos, mayhem? What the fuck? You know, we got to so, bring the honor back. Bring the honor back. So yeah, I, I, I kind of like that." Uh, that part of it. So next week we're going to get Silas Young and Kenny King for the TV title cool. re- rematch there. And then uh, let's talk a little bit about what happened this week on Being the Elite. Ooh. Uh, I got a sidebar real quick. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the new uh, three-man tag titles. The, the the belts themselves? Yeah. yeah. This is kind of like they just got those other belts. Like, right. Yeah, they right. seem they're, fine. They're good. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, I do like the new world championship. I definitely like the new TV title because that old TV title sucked. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the, the six-man belts, I, I like the other ones a little bit better, I think. Uh, so yeah, being the elite uh, this week, uh, they were on the New Japan was on the Australian tour, Ooh. which uh, by all accounts was a big uh, success uh, financially for everybody involved. Tons of Good. merch uh, sold. Not, not every show was a sellout, uh, but big uh, big merch sales for everybody. And, Those uh, Australians go nuts for when wrestling comes in, man. Absolutely, they need it. And, and so we did get uh, we got more of uh, of uh, Kenny being on his own. Basically, uh, we. Had the uh, the young bucks meeting with the Tongan side of the Bullet Club, which was fun. Just kind of getting gauging where they're at. Where are you guys at? Are you are you are, 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 are we good here? Are you on our side? Are you on are you on Kenny's side? Are you on Omega side? Well, and actually, what uh, what Matt Jackson was talking about was well, really, this is just between Cody and Kenny. The Bullet Club, we're still solid as a unit. We're cool, right? <laughs> and of course, Tama Tong is like, yeah. It's like Cody said, the Bullet Club is fine, and and Cody comes in after the after the meeting. Oh, what are we having a meeting here? I didn't call any meeting. And then Kenny tries to enter into the the Bullet Club's locker room, and uh, they get into this big pull apart. 
Cody throws a, a, a damn chair. Chaos in the bullet That was a good club. throw, too. Yes, yes. A nice, <laughs> a nice, a nice slow-mo with the chair. And, and so I, I, I like the nice little pull-apart between the Bullet Club. I like uh, fucking Kenny Omega going up to Chase Owens and be like, hey, man, we're going to be tagging on these Honor Rising shows. Are you, are, you, are you on my team for sure? Are you on my side? And Chase is like, hey, man, I'm Team Tongan. <laughs> so I, I love the, the Chase Owens yes. as, as part of the OGs in the Bullet Club. Uh, Team Tongan, uh, I did working on that Tongan death grip. Retweet that uh, that that gif of uh, Cody throwing the chair. My favorite is just Toma Tonga in the background, just yes! arms crossed, <laughs> not giving any fucks. It's like, yep. Yeah, that's the, Bullet Club during right there. All the chaos and Tom Bullet and Tonga just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So really, that's why I'm wearing my Grill of the Destiny shirt. <laughs> nice, nice. Yes. So yeah, good stuff from. Uh, uh, from being the elite this week. So, okay, real quick, let's uh, run through these matches again for Honor Rising coming up this weekend. Uh, we won't run through the whole card. We kind of did some of that last week, but uh, some of the big matches uh, come up. Well, we do get uh, Hinare and, and Kitamura teaming up against uh, some uh, Bullet Club uh, OGs, uh, Fale and Yujiro, so that should be a lot of fun. Cheeseburger teaming up with Liger in a six-man mm. match versus uh, some Bullet Club OGs. And then you got the Young Bucks versus David Finlay and Juice Robinson. Perhaps a hmm. test of what the Young Bucks might look like in a heavyweight situation, even though Finley's kind of walking that line between Young Lion, Junior Heavyweight, Heavyweight, what the fuck is... Nobody knows what David Finlay is. He's, th- he's there. He's there. Uh, but yeah, interesting matchup there. Uh, big interesting matchup here with Flip Gordon taking on Kushida and Hiromu Takahashi in a special special three-way match. Uh, So that will be the Friday show. And then the big main event... Uh, well, two big main events, actually. Hiro Oki Goto defending the Never Openweight Championship against my favorite Ring of Honor star, the Beer City Bruiser. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Rooting for Beer City Bruiser <laughs> all the way in this one. BCB. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, holding my breath, but uh, it'll be fun to see uh, Beer City Bruiser in that setting against the very serious Hiro Oki Goto. <laughs> uh, and then the big main event, uh, the Golden Lovers back together again, Kenny Omega and Kota, Kota Ibushi teaming up with the aforementioned Chase. Owens, Team Tongan, Tongan taking on Cody, Hangman Page, and Marty Skrull. So it'll be interesting. Where does Marty mm. Skrull's, uh, 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 uh where does he? Uh, what am I trying his to? His alliance. Yeah. Where does he? Where? Yeah. Where? Do, where? Who does he line up with? Who <laughs> it shouldn't be his problem. He didn't sign up for this. Right. Right. And also, Hangman Page. I mean, he's a he's a hung bucks guy. He's a young bucks mm-hmm. guy with the six man title. So, uh, should be a really cool seeing what it looks like night one there with the Bullet Club possibly exploding there. Then uh, night two. Both of these shows are from uh, Corican Hall. So uh, that that first one's Friday night. This one's uh, Saturday. Uh, uh, I should say uh, Friday morning and then Saturday morning. Uh, any it'd be late Thursday night and so these late are all Friday New night. Japan World. Uh, New Japan World. Yep, for both of these shows. Uh, Beer City Bruiser versus Toa Hanare opening match uh, night Man, two. Imagine him coming out with a brand new championship new, around his wa- new, shoulder. Brand new, never open weight <laughs> champion that will definitely not fit around his waist. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. <laughs> Other stuff. Hey, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I just had the mental image of him with the championship around a keg and him carrying it around <laughs> that way. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's awesome. I got to find what, what's uh, <coughs> there we go. Here we are. Here. It's that would be very- Holy shit. Uh, Taguchi teams up with Flip Gordon on the second night versus a couple of LIJ guys, Hiromu and Bushi. Uh, Hiromu and Bushi have a weird opportunity for the junior heavyweight tag titles Ooh. coming up on the anniversary show for uh, uh, for New Japan. We'll talk about, 3K. talk about that in a minute there. Yeah. And That'd be fun. That'll Rapungi be really 3K fun. 3K and it's a three-way again oh. with uh, Suzuki Gun guys. Weird. So we'll weird. talk about that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Other stuff. Uh, Chucky T and Beretta, or no, sorry, Chucky T teaming up with Jay White and Yoshi oh, yeah. uh versus the Young Bucks and Hangman versus the Hung Bucks. Uh, so this is a special six man tag match. So I don't know, uh, might be a might be a possible Ring of Honor spoiler here if the Hung Bucks come out without the Ring of Honor six man titles mm-hmm. uh, because they did tape a bunch of TV uh, last week uh, in in Atlanta. So Oof. I guess we'll see uh, how the Hung Bucks come out there uh, for that match. <clears throat> Again, I have not seen spoilers yet, but uh, possible uh, spoiler. When we go spoiler-free. 
Uh, then Dalton Castle defends his Ring of Honor championship, so not set in stone that he will face Jay Lethal. He ha- does have to defend at these shows versus Trent Beretta, uh, a brand new heavyweight mm-hmm. for Ring of or for uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, so that should be a fun match with, of course, Beretta working the dick in real life gimmick uh, <laughs> on uh, being the elite and, and so on and so forth. Then the big main event from night two, the Golden Lovers all by themselves this time, Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi versus Cody and Marty Skrull. Oof. So again, where does Skrull's alliance rely on this one? Uh, does he feel torn uh, towards Kenny Omega? Uh, and they do have uh, Team Kenny and Team Cody shirts available now, and it'd be really interesting to see how those sell right now because I feel like the world should be on Team Kenny side but mm-hmm. i think man cody is really popular he's in, hot, in ring of honor so and i like his shirt better what i what, oh, he's got the kind of red white and blue mm-hmm. theme and kenny's got the omega symbol in the background on there as well all right let's talk the uh the uh anniversary show for uh, new japan coming up on the uh what is it the ninth yes the Six. ninth no, the, yes, the sixth. I get. I keep getting them confused. New Japan. <laughs> 69. New Japan's on the sixth. <laughs> Ring of Honor's on the ninth. Two different anniversary shows. Ryusuke Taguchi was the 69th uh, uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Why I threw that in there, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, Tremendous analysis. <laughs> opening, uh, it's going to open up with a 10-man match. Taguchi, Kushida, Tiger Mask, Jushin Thunder Liger, and Tenzan versus all the Young Lions. Uh, almost all the Young Lions. Ren Narita, Tetsuhiro Yagi, Shota Umino, Tomoyuki Oka, and Yuji Nagata is weirdly on that team with, right. uh, with, uh, <laughs> with four other Young Lions. So looks like Nagata his team's probably taking a loss there. Uh, then, the best of seven series, the final match, Manabu Nakanishi taking on Katsuya Kitamura in the final match of the series. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because these two faced each other once already yep. in this best of seven. Uh, obviously, with uh, Kojima getting knocked out, I think he was supposed to be one of the uh, one of the matchups in this one. For sure. Uh, so we're doubling up with Manabu Nakanishi here. But uh, this You'll is- quick, Kojima. Is this the one? Is this is this where Katsuya Kitamura will he finally get a win? Second opportunity here against Nakanishi. Probably not, but you never know. You never know. Hold out hope. You never know what could happen. Uh, then Toa Hinare, David Finley, and Juice Robinson take on Toru Yano, Tomohiro Ishii, and Hiro Okigoto. Six-man matchup there. Uh, then your uh, junior uh, junior tag match, junior uh, tag title match, Sho and Yo, current champions, defending against El Desperado and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. You remember last week they lost to those guys on the uh, the. the uh uh, whatever the show was, the show is gone. The, uh, yeah. the show is gone. It's in the, the past, the, man. Uh, the, what is it? The, the Sapporo show? The no, the Osaka New Beginning. Yeah, there we they go. They lost to them with the with the Skullduggery, of course. Kaz, uh, no, 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 not him. Uh, not him. Uh, so they lost to uh, Team Suzuki Gun with the Skullduggery, so they get the rematch here. But for some reason, Hiromu Takahashi and Bushi get thrown into this match as well. Because Ta- they're badasses. Takahashi coming off the loss to Will Ospreay. Bushi coming off the victory against Gato. I guess that's why they get thrown into this <laughs> match. But it will be a three-way with the uh, Los Ingobernables guys thrown in there, so that'll be interesting. Yoshihashi's got a singles match versus Sonata. Interesting with mm. Yoshihashi coming off the match with Naito. Uh, uh, losing that one, Sonata losing the big match That's versus Okada. That's going to be Okada. a Snornata match. <laughs> <laughs> but again, uh, no, it'll be fu- it'll be good. It, it, but <laughs> yeah, Yo- Yoshihashi got a lot of uh, he had a lot of uh, positives coming out of the match with when Naito. he has that fire in him, he he could put on a match. And I thought Sonata had the hell of a match mm-hmm. with Okada. So it'll be interesting to see which way they go here with those two. Uh, then a, another special singles match: Tetsuya Naito taking on Tai Chi. Tai Chi attacked Naito after the. Uh, new beginning match where he defeated uh, Yoshihashi. These two actually did have a match that I have not seen. It was at, uh, there was like a Taka Michinoku Tai Chi anniversary show on some other, like a Kai and Tai Dojo show, I want to yeah. say. Uh, again, I didn't see it, but I, I've heard it was a pretty good match that these two had. Sure. And Tai Chi has, of course, been hinting at moving up to the heavyweight division. Of course, attacking Naito uh, brought this match forward. So, interesting with Tai Chi, taking on Everyone's a heavyweight. Attack here. Naito. 
Uh, then the match that they've been building up for a, a little while now, Togi Makabe challenging Minoru Suzuki for the IWGP Intercontinental title. And then the big main event, Kazuchika Okada versus Will Ospreay. Uh, non-title matchup here, but the uh, heavyweight champion versus the junior heavyweight champion. Mm. Really interesting. Both of them members of Chaos. Uh, so should be a fun matchup. And some inter uh, interfaction uh, warfare here. It'd almost be fun to see uh, Osprey to get a win here to kind of get that fire going and everybody else in chaos too. Like, oh. It would definitely be interesting. I do not expect Will Osprey no. to win. Uh, Just, I, I, I want to see, amazing. I want to <laughs> see like Okada and Ishii go at it. Like, yeah. like uh, there's, some, I want to see some well, more think, guys rise up. I think that's that might be part of this idea too. Is the idea of opening up because Okada has faced everyone. Now we're opening up this idea of facing guys within the faction, mm-hmm. and of course with Jay White walking around stirring the pots and all these factions, talking about interfaction warfare and fighting each other. That's uh, this is the first step in that direction. Yeah. And it's let's face it, with uh, Okada needing. Some fresh matchups. Uh, mm. It'll be it'll be interesting. It, it, now, Ishii <laughs> deserves some recognition in that uh, that tile pitcher though. He's definitely someone I want to see. You know, uh, with Okada, you know, fucking like people raving about their match. They don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, he deserves a title shot after uh, having a, a, a victory over Okada a couple years ago in the G one. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, I guess we got to wrap this thing up, huh? I think we're just Ishii fanboys. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's uh, go to the Kojima tweet. Now it's time for the Satoshi Kojima tweet of the week. Guys, I'm a little worried uh, for Kojima. He hasn't tweeted since Valentine's Day. Oof, he has ooh. been he's, he's rehabbing that knee, uh, but he hasn't tweeted a lot. But uh, I, I do have a very uh, a, a relevant tweet with Honor Rising coming up this weekend. Flip Gordon was uh, talking on Twitter about... Uh, uh, he was very excited about this opportunity to uh, wrestle in New Japan for the first time, his first ever Japanese tour. Kojima responded saying, I respect you. I will not forget the wonderful fight I saw in Mexico. Many fans will be impressed, even in Japan. (laughs) There's Kojima talking about Flip Gordon. So, uh, yeah, hopefully Kojima gets back on the back on Twitter and and starts doing some more English tweets. If not, we'll have to start just reading his Japanese ones (laughs) from prior to uh, uh, prior to uh, Valentine's Day. So. All right. Well, you get some fun translations, though. That's true. That's true. Mm. Google Translate could be a lot of fun. So maybe we'll 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 see what happens next week if Kojima starts tweeting again or not. All right. So follow this show on Twitter at Strong Honor. Follow me at Tommy Stryker. If you like the three of us talking wrestling, check out our other podcast, The Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. We talk all things WWE, NXT. We talk all the best pro wrestling over there. Best Pro Wrestling Podcast dot com. And, uh, yeah, Taco, where can people find you? Ooh. Follow me on Twitter at HGREV Taco. And you can follow me, Joe, at Joe BPWB. That's at Joe, Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. Thanks again for checking out the show. Rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks. Bye. Adios. Peace. My botch. Never give up. Never give up. Yeah. Right, John Cena, never give up. Hey. Hasta jueves. Adiós.